Welcome to the official YouTube channel for the Colin Coward Podcast. Go on, hit the subscribe button. There you go, right down there. If you wanna be among the first to hear my weekly takes, NFL, college football, more, right there. All right, DraftKings did release its win total. So we both talked about the power of Kirk Cousins. Atlanta is a shocking 10 and a half over under. And the Vikings, who I think are stacked offensively, are at six and a half. That's Kirk Cousins. Let me throw another one at you. This one. So I, when the Jets last year had Aaron Rodgers, I said, listen, the history of old quarterbacks is they got to have good O-lines. Russell Wilson's first year in Denver, they didn't. He stunk. Stafford Rams did. Then his third year, I think it was, they didn't. He struggled. Brady's first year in Tampa, excellent. They had injuries. It wasn't as good. You can't have a 40-year-old. That's why Atlanta for Kirk Cousins works. That's a really good O-line. That's why Jared Goff works. He's younger, but great O-line. So the Jets have signed some kind of like Tyron Smith, who will play about 13 games a year, uh, kid from the Ravens. The Jets are nine and a half. And I'm like, time out. If you look at the AFC, Deshaun Watson's back. Um, you know, uh, uh, Herbert's got a legitimate coach. CJ Stroud is moving up fast. Trevor Lawrence will be healthy. Um, you know, two of Mike McDaniels are going nowhere. Uh, Josh Allen now has between Kincaid and Cook has some really nice offensive weapons. I look at the Jets in nine and a half and I think, boy, you are. That's a bad old line for an old quarterback off an Achilles surgery. I said it this year during the season, Aaron being relevant in January to me is over. It's nothing against Aaron. It's just old quarterbacks and crappy old lines don't work. What do you make on? I would bet the under on that all day. Well, I, I've been down on him, but if I wanted to make the case, Miami just lost a ton of yes. talent. They had a lot of guys walk out the door. They also lost Vic Fangio. And their defense was already in question. And Vic called them out thinking like no one wants to focus. And I think a lot has to do with the city they live in. Are they about to pay two of 45, 50 million dollars a year? Because if they do, I'm out. And so to me, Miami still has some question marks, even if we all agree Mike is a great play caller. Quarterback, I'm definitely not sold on. And defensively, I mean, they just lost their best defensive player. He just walked in free agency. The Patriots. Now, the Jets finally beat him, I think, week, whatever, the last week of the season, have owned the Jets. Didn't didn't Bill beat him like eight straight seasons, swept him? Well, Bill's gone. I think the Patriots got a couple years of coming to yeah. Jesus, and Robert Kraft is about to find out what the NFL is really yeah. like. It could be ugly yeah. there. And then the Bills, like, I, I, whenever I see the Super Bowl windows close, I laugh, as long as you have Josh Allen. When you have Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, your roster can be in flux. You got a chance. But the Jets did beat yeah. them in one game last yeah. year. So I'd have to look at the rest of their schedule. I, eight to nine wins. Best that, That's assuming Aaron Rodgers, who, let's face it, you go back. Because part of Russell Wilson isn't just the last two years. Remember the last year in Seattle. So now it's, it's a body of work going the wrong way. Aaron, the, the last year in Green Bay, something was off. It might have just been age. In the history of sports, most guys at 38, 39 start trending the wrong way. I, I, I know he's a healthy guy. He looks good, but... He wasn't quite as fast. His arm's still there, but a huge part of his ability was the well, ad lib, and that made John, him a great player. The analytics, Greg Cosell and Warren Sharp and others were on this. Aaron's analytics is he just didn't run anymore. Like, and if he doesn't run, I mean, say what you want to. Well, but he's, he's not as fast probably anymore, so he doesn't want to risk getting tackled yeah, or hit. Yeah, guys don't want to get hit. I mean, you know, Eli Manning and Brady mastered it. it. Get rid of it quick or figure out how to roll and not get hit. So I don't think Aaron... I also think Aaron isn't quite as committed as a lot of the young guys that are really bigger, stronger. And I and I think the only way to be good is sort of to be focused like Kirk Cousins later or obsessed like Brady. I don't think there's a way to be casually. And, and Aaron, you know, I've heard this from multiple people. Aaron, he's not going to sit and watch game film all weekend. That's not what he's going to do as a personality. He's going to read some things and listen to music and do his own thing. He is not Brady on the film. He's not Peyton. That's not, he's not breeze as a workaholic. Aaron has, is one of those guys. It's almost like, well, cause he had more physical capability than those guys. It's like a rock star, you know, the, the Bonos and the bands edges that have survived didn't have long periods of drug use. Like they took care of their body. They yeah. partied. But they have aged very well. The bands that didn't haven't. Like, I think Aaron, 
didn't quite take the same level of care. And I think he's aging faster than other guys. Yeah, I think if he can't move anywhere remotely like he used to, that's a problem. The one thing he has going that Peyton lost, Breeze lost, Rob, their, their arms failed them. You know, Roger's arm is still strong. So to me, he's still going to be able to function. But I think his day, the day and age of him just being some lock elite player, it, it's been gone now for a couple of years. And I just think the question now is the pressure on the offensive coordinator, which let's face it, if you just pulled people in the NFL, is Nate Hackett any good or is he not any good? Most people would say he's not any good. And then the other reason he's there is because he meshes with Aaron. So is Aaron just telling him what to do? Like there's got to be a little give and take. And you saw how many times this year with Aaron shaking his head, you know, with play calls when he would show up. It's just, I, I think it's got a chance to be a pattern. They do have some players. There's no disputing that. They have impact players on both sides of the ball. But if you can't protect a quarterback who now can't really move, Jared Goff, like you said, can't move. Well, he's got arguably the best offensive line in the league, doesn't need to move. Well, if these guys, if Smith gets hurt, if Moses gets hurt, if their interior offensive line isn't any good, you're a sitting duck. Even Zach Wilson kept them alive last year because he just kind of scrambled around. And so, yeah, I, I I think the Jets are fascinating. I, that division, though, I think I think Miami could be in for uh, come back to the uh, to the the average a little bit, and the Patriots are in for real NFL life now. <laughs> the other thing, I saw the Cowboys like ten and a half too. That that seems a little high. I mean, they've lost a lot so, of players. By the way, Niners, Ravens, Chiefs, eleven and a half. I tend to bet the unders once you get into that space. Um, Lions, Packers, Eagles, Bills, Bengals, Dolphins, Falcons, Cowboys, Falcons, the head scratcher, a little bit, 10 and a half. Texans, Jets, nine and a half. I'd buy that with the Texans. I don't with the Jets. Uh, Rams pull back to eight and a half. I think Aaron Donald, they subtract a win. I thought they would be nine and a half ish. Vikings, very low. Kirk Cousins, not there. And uh, Patriots, Panthers at four and a half. Titans, Broncos, five and a half. Again, it, it, I, I do believe. With the Broncos, I, I think they're going to draft a quarterback. I, and I think, to be honest with you, Bo Nix would win immediately because I think he's got 61 starts. I just interviewed – I talked to the yeah. kid last week for 30 minutes, 35 minutes on and off the air. Mm -hmm. He's just a grown-up. He's ready to play NFL football. Whether or not you think he has this high ceiling, he, that kid's seen it. You know he's had five offensive coordinators in five years, and he's worked with all of them. He's going to work. I think adversity is – proven to matter a lot with a lot of these quarterbacks that have had some struggles in college. Like Mahomes wasn't winning a lot. Josh Allen was told, we don't have scholarships for you, right? Lamar Jackson tumbled in the draft. Bo Nix got his ass kicked in the SEC. Yeah. I mean, he was viewed even when he transferred to Oregon. So yeah, I, I'm fascinated by him. I, I think he needs to go to the right spot. And, and Sean Payton, I mean, they're let's face it, they're kind of desperate right now. I guess they could just kind of roll it over a year, but I don't think Sean Payton's making $18 million a year to try to win four or five games. Like he's going to try to compete immediately in that division. Now with Harbaugh in it, it got a lot harder. Even the Raiders. I don't know if Pierce is going to be a great head coach. They do have impact yes. players. They're not like an easy team no, to play. No, they've they're. I've said this for years. I, the Raiders have five or six and they have key positions, star receiver, rush in, yeah. left tackle. Like if they could get a quarterback, right. I don't doubt the Raiders because shit at the end of the year, I thought they were really competitive playing with a lot of fire and purpose with Aiden O'Connell. So I'm okay with it. Um, I, by the way, I was in the car today, and I, I turned you on right as you were talking to Mick Cronin about his struggles, and he gave the line, I still turn left on Sunset. That's one of the greatest <laughs> lines I've ever heard. I don't think yeah, – whether you win eight games or you win 30, I still turn left on Sunset. That's that's an all-timer. Yeah, he comes over that hill from Encino. It's a left right by the circular hotel, and you go left on Sunset into Bel Air, then Beverly Hills, then right to UCLA. It's a pretty good life. I haven't been to every campus in America, but when you walk on UCLA's campus, there there's got to be a short list of campuses. Oh no, there's, I don't think there's anything like it. I mean, USC, Stanford, you know, there's it's LA, it's it's the Bay Area, but nope, there's nothing like UCLA I've ever been to. No, John Middlecoff, former NFL scout, his podcast is three and out. Chopped it up for a little over an hour this week. Loved uh, seeing you, buddy. We'll we'll talk in a week. Okay, see you, Colin.